Hey, what's up everybody? So today I will be driving through Kapyong, which as you can see is a riverside area on my motorcycle. It's uh, actually a very popular area uh, in the summer, but right now it's sort of towards the end of the summer. Uh, so you won't see as much traffic, although I am driving through it on a Saturday. So this is as much traffic as you'll probably see in this area. Um, I also have the People's Champ on here. He's one of my Discord members. And we're going to actually have him comment on this video and talk about how you know safe or enjoyable he thinks uh, maybe motorcycling in Korea could be and maybe like the road conditions and whatnot. We'll just start from there and we'll probably go off into tangents. But uh, the People's Champ is from the States, so he's driven a motorcycle in America and he's also visited Thailand quite a lot so he can also compare and contrast it to there um, what's up people's champ how are you doing hey Ethan thanks for having me on man uh, I to comment on this uh, exciting adventure that you took <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't know if it's like exciting it's actually it's exciting to me but it's actually sort of routine too because uh, this is what I like to do. This is only like uh, 20 minutes from my house. This this is my neighborhood. What do you think? Uh, right now it's just the roads, but <laughs> you saw like that river and such, right? I mean, is is it sort of like unique or, you know, you're from California, so you got the PCH right next to you because you're in San Francisco. You're thinking, ah, this is just nothing. <laughs> yeah i mean it looks it looks uh really, really nice i mean obviously super clean you know there's no uh coke cans or like coke cans. cigarette <laughs> Did you... littered on the streets uh it looks pretty green to me you know uh so that's always good the road seems kind of fun kind of windy a little bit uh yeah you know, curvature in there was just always fun for driving uh you got some cars approaching they look super small like some hatchback yeah. i guess is that like a popular car in korea like a hatchback style of car that car is very popular right up there because the smaller cars they pay less for parking they pay less for tolls and everything so you're incentivized oh. to drive a small car and that particular car fits like the most budget car i think the only thing that you get a better incentive in, with is electric cars they actually don't have to pay parking at all in a lot of places and such. But, oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I think that's a Kia morning. Uh, anyways, yeah. I mean, wh why why are you concerned about Coke cans? Where do you see Coke cans? I don't think I've seen them in Thailand. I don't really see I mean, I mean California does a decent in, job. In Thailand, in like heavily dense cities, obviously, like in San Francisco, oh. where I'm at, it's pretty littered here. New York is another one where... You know, really? there's a, like, yeah, in New York especially, they have mountains of like trash bags every day, and they come pick up the garbage almost every day in New yeah, York. Yeah, but it's like to the side of the road, right? I mean, because it is, but know. there's obviously a few that just slip out of the bag, you know, like, oh. uh, like one can here, one like, you know, rotten apple there, yeah. you know, and San Francisco gets a lot worse than that, but uh, yeah, that's definitely. Some of the things you have to watch out for when you walk uh, and even just drive around here. Um, so in the yeah. States, one of the I think, biggest changes I've seen the last few years is that you see here where there's these nice green roads and on the side, it's, it's all just trees and there's oh. these little areas, right? In yeah. San Francisco and a lot of parts in just California in general, those yeah. intersections have been taken over by homeless people. So they set up camps there and like, like in, in like in, in an area like this, they would just do it, it which is really, oh yeah, totally. Uh, you know, I, I like, I can't really relate to this because I don't think homelessness was a problem that much. I mean, we had homeless, it was a problem. We still had Skid Row like in LA, but my friends tell me it's just gotten worse and, and I can't really imagine it, you know, like how many homeless could be possibly there but i mean i also want to comment that this is a countryside uh so some people might think it's cleaner because it's a countryside but actually if you go into seoul i find it 
probably cleaner and the roads are better maintained um, because they, they have more trash workers and people like that to clean it up. Um, this is this sort of is one area I think Korea did improve on over the years, actually. Like, uh, it seems like th Thailand sort of went, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, America went sort of the, the opposite way with maybe homeless people and stuff littered on the side. Um, but in Korea, they've really cleaned up the roads and made it a lot safer. So I'm, I'm quite happy about this. Hopefully they keep improving it. Um, but also, like, you notice a lot of motorcyclists here. Uh, lately, it's become really popular because of COVID. Koreans can't travel outside. So um, they try to do more activities inside Korea. And Koreans don't do the touristy stuff. Like, they don't really need to go to Myeongdong or, you know, they'd like to go to Hongdae and stuff just to drink or whatever, but they're, they're less touristy. So they want to go, like, you know, for example, to Thailand and such like that, but they can't. So instead, they, they've got motorcycles and they, they like to go out into the countryside like this and just experience Korean greenery. But I, I really like the motorcycle culture here. You'll notice, like, these guys, I'm waving at them and then they'll like nod at me or wave back at me. So that's pretty cool. Do you have that like in um, California? I know in Thailand it is, it's just so normal. Like if you drive a motorcycle, it's like you dri you're driving a motorcycle like everywhere else. Why are you waving at me, you know? But in, in Korea, it's like you're part of the motorcycle culture. So you, we all wave and nod at each other whenever we pass. Um, is that something, you know, I didn't really drive a motorcycle in the States. Do you, do you think that sort of happens in the States? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't drive, I didn't drive a motorcycle for a long time, but I, I, I definitely see that and I felt that where, you know, if you're, if you're driving a similar type of bike or just a motorcycle in general, you get that friendly mm -hmm. nod. Uh, I think it's like, if you're, uh, part of like a like-minded kind of group of people following yeah. something, like, for example, before I had a, a E46 M3 and Every time oh. I drove by a, a E46 M3, we would just like give that nod, right? And I'm sure yeah. you, know, you had a 2000 before, and you know, yeah. a lot of my friends have the S2000s, but that's like one of the things. Like when you see you guys, each other, there's yeah. you know, specific car meets for that, you guys, only for S2000s. And, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. I think it's the same <laughs> thing where, like, if you see that hobby evident in the road, yeah. you know, you give them like a friendly what's up, right? Just to say, like, hey, I, I, I see where you're coming from, and I'm living that same. You know, yeah, yeah, you're sort of relating. That's what I. That's sort of what I miss about American culture. Like, I didn't drive a motorcycle, but I could sort of assume that that's what they would do. And it's the same here, I guess, in Korea. You know, like, it's you don't. I mean, I you see quite a lot of motorcycles, but people who drive motorcycles here generally they do it for a hobby. The people that don't are like you can see they're they're there's delivery guys but you can clearly tell they're delivery guys you know so you don't wave at them or anything so that's true um but yeah anything else you're noticing here like that you can compare and contrast uh like this kind of reminds me of in, in california probably of like napa area where it's just like you know greens on each side I uh, I live in downtown San Francisco, so seeing mm. all this is a luxury for me. You know, it it, it rarely uh. happens because even like on highways, there's always you know something to to either the left or whatever mm. else. But here, you know, you see these rolling, you know, green hills right in the backdrop, and you have these fields that that you know seems like it goes on forever and it looks like some kind of farm <laughs> thing going on. Not 100% sure, but it reminds me of on the drive to Napa, it's like this where you have all these fields and obviously yeah, yeah. growing. And then the more you kind of get into the, uh, the epicenter, the more uh, wine country it gets, you know, the more uh, you're kind of encapsulated with that with that culture. Yeah, actually, I've been to Napa from San Francisco, so I could in that sense, I think it's very similar to Korea. Like I like. I mean, this isn't Seoul, you know, but this is about probably the same distance away from Seoul as Napa is from, like, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, even people who are in Seoul would probably think the same. So a lot of the guys that are here right now, they're out here to uh, do water sports. Like this Kapyong area, because there's a lot of riversides, it's known for water sports. Like, you'll see, like, I... 
You see these guys parked right here on the left? They're parked because onto the right hand side, you can't really see it. There's a lot of water sports areas. Like I'll stop by one of them, one or two of them, so you'll see more. But you see like over there, there's like boats and such. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's what they're doing. Um, they don't drink wine here. They just drink soju and get on boats. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that's a that's like, yeah. Actually, driving in Korea, you're. It's like seems like it's very similar to America now. Um, oh, look at these guys. They're, they're farang. <laughs> I actually, I not I nodded at him at the very end. Okay. <laughs> like, like there's a guy. You can see it's like a couple, a guy and a girl, and I could sort of like the guy made eye contact with me. He's like looking at me with sort of jealousy, like. Oh, I wish I was on a motorcycle, like, <laughs> make a walk through this. That's, I don't know, that's, that's what I was assuming. And I just smiled and I mean, he went back. His girlfriend completely ignores me. <laughs> like, uh -huh. <laughs> you know how girls are. Girls don't like motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you say water sports, what do you mean by water sports? You will see. I'll save that. Uh, it's become yeah. really popular in Korea, and it, it's become like wakeboarding, right? Uh, um, but they okay. they've expanded kind of, on that. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like water leader sport. You you'll see. I, I'll I'll shoot drone on it. Um, we'll talk about that a little later when we're actually seeing it. But I'm actually headed towards a very popular tourist attraction called Nami Island. Um, I actually never been on it. But I know, like, the season to go is, is, is off, so I'm not going on it, but I'll fly a drone over it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, do you, like, does this seem more like America to you? Like, I think, I think it is, because, like, motorcycles I mean, are more rare. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, just, like, looking at the road, right, it definitely mm. feels like a Napa vibe, because, you know, like, on regular, like, roads, there's at least two yellow lines, right? But if there's only one yellow line... That's when you know you're like, you know, kind of in the country. But usually street roads, you have that two vertical yeah. yellow lines going. And yeah, yeah, double, double yellow. More yeah. robust, right? The lanes yeah. are a little bit more wider in those areas. But yeah. I feel like the lanes, I feel like, uh, you know, in Asia too, like in America, like vehicles get wider. You know, you have the wide semis yeah, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? In Asia, it seems like it's getting taller. Like I see these tall skinny buses like fitting yeah. through the, you know tiny crevices and they get through they're fine right but i feel like yeah. they're going more vertical and in the western world uh if you've never yeah. been there before there there's like a sign on these big trucks that says you know wide yeah. load through like be careful or whatever right but um yeah. i've never seen that in asia yeah i think that's where maybe driving in korea is going to be more similar to driving like in thailand um these roads are going to be more narrow because Actually, in the countryside, it's all right. And in, in Seoul and all these other cities, they've reworked the roads to make it wider. But there's some areas you just can't rework, and they're, they're skinny. So if you have a big car, you sometimes literally get stuck, or it's very uncomfortable and not enjoyable to drive through it. So uh, America is different. Like America, the roads are created for cars, not for people. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say. Like if you walk around, they're like, why are you walking around? I mean, maybe less so in San Francisco, but like in Orange County, for example, nobody walks around, you know, they just stare at you. Like, why are you walking around? But um, in, in <laughs> Korea and Thailand, it's a bit different, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, why are you walking around there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Are you, hey, what, what? Get some fresh air? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> only homeless people walk around, literally, like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, everyone has a car, like, you're not American. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think I'm almost approaching the area where I think I stop over, uh, and I'm like, ah, okay, I have to check out what's happening over here. Yeah, the view it looks pretty amazing already. Yeah? And you haven't even reached the apex yet. It's sort of average, I would say, but, you know, just staying home all the time. I yeah. wasn't able to go out and drive, so today I, I almost had tears in my eyes. Just driving through here, it was just the smell of... <laughs> yeah, seriously, and... and <laughs> listening to my Christian music, you know, like, oh... 
<laughs> uh, no, I was uh, actually I was listening to uh, what was I listening? I was listening to K-pop actually, like Korean ballads, like love songs oh. and stuff. Korean <laughs> <laughs> R&B. Uh, huh? You're listening to some good old BTS. Some BTS. No, butter. no, no. You know, I'm the only person that probably doesn't really listen to BTS. Uh, oh. But okay, yeah. Here's here's where. Oh no, I don't do the drone here. But I'm like, let me check it out. What's going on here? You know. And you notice like, people are rent. This is very popular. Those big camping cars. That wasn't a thing in Korea until recently. Like everything is about camping and outdoor activity. And um, I think this is one positive about Korea. Um, because more people are wanting to go outdoors and do these outdoor activities, there is like an economy of scale. Oh man, look at that jacket, styling, looking good. I <laughs> <laughs> got a little playground, and uh, I'm talking. I think they're wakeboarding, but they're yeah. not. <laughs> What's that red thing right there? That big red thing? Is that like a slide? Yeah. Uh, these kinds of water sports, they become very affordable. They're, that's a water slide. Uh, okay, Damn, okay. That, that water slide over there looks legit. That's what I just said. That's yeah, I see slide. the water? Oh, they're spraying down there. Yeah, I see it. Uh, I see it. Whoa, jet boat. Did, see, did you see that? That, uh, oh no, I missed water? it. But so that, that jet boat right there, right? That yeah, yacht thing, it would go underneath the water. Wait, so question about these like uh, cars, oh. these big camper cars. Do people mm. build it out like an RV, like here in the States, where, you know, like in, in the States, like that's very popular where you get those type of cars, you, mm. build a, you build a bed in there, you build a, you know, a shower and bathroom, and you mm. know, you just like become a digital nomad in the States and you just drive around. Is that also true in, in Korea right now? Uh, they don't do it because they want to be a minimalist. But they do it because they want, yeah, to go out in the weekends. And it is very popular. They, like all these camping cars, the main ones they import from are from America. So America okay. has like the best camping car culture. So they import that. Um, I saw some foreigners, though, uh, get like the minibuses. You know, in Korea, they have the minibuses, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like quite a van, but not like quite like a big bus but it's like a bus for like kindergarten schoolers or whatever those become really cheap like the older ones because yeah. like maybe the business went out and they buy for like two three thousand dollars and i saw somebody on the the group rebuild that oh, into an rv that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that'd be dope that's super cool yeah it's because it's so dope you know it's like much bigger than like a van per se right so yeah. it's like bigger than that car that you saw so they, they install like kitchen, everything. Um, so there is like a whole industry. I just saw that one guy is like one, like one of his rags to riches stories is he failed in business and he started uh, this one business was really simple. Like he would bring oil or something, change oil for people that, that are stuck in the middle of the road. And there was like a demand near the Pusan area or something. But he also like started making little th modifications for the car. But recently, everybody is wanting to modify their car one way or another for this new chabak uh, culture, which means cha means uh, like uh, car, pak means like ilbak il, like sleep overnight. So it's like sleep in a car overnight kind of culture. So it's not even necessarily like those big vans, but they'll get like an SUV, for example, like this. And then, like the center console, they will, um, you know, make a little thing so that it could be a table or something. Or when they fold the seats down, they they might want like something to put in between the seats to like have a larger bed area or something like that. And yeah, he's and those car. those businesses are blowing up. Yeah, it's a little sleeper car, you know. Yeah, and you know, another one of my buddies who I went on uh, that trip with the Tesla, he's figured out how to like. I guess there's a big culture of camping with your Tesla. Like he does something with the rear seats and then puts a sleeping bag in there and sleeps there. So this is this is popular. Um, and I think that's more practical for a lot of people. Like I personally like the appeal of, you know, having the van life. That sounds cool. But when you actually do it, it's like, eh, you know, you want to deal with all that, be dirty and not be you know, like these guys are sort of crazy. Right. Um, some ways. But <laughs> 
I mean, I think I'd do it because I'm sort of crazy, but most likely you'll just go out there and sleep overnight in a, in a car because pitching up a tent and all that is a pain in the butt. And in Korea, particularly because there's not a lot of grasslands, you're usually camping by a river with a bunch of rocks. Um, a car is more practical. And then they bring along like tables, chairs, like really, they say kamsong, meaning like... Uh, I don't know, like this feel, like this camping feel thing with all these cute LED lights. And then, you know, they, they enjoy themselves. Like they also bring a lot of food because Korean, you know, camping culture is about mostly food. And then they just, you know, sleep in the car. That's it. Done. And then they pack up and go back home, you know, to Seoul. And that's, uh, you know, one of, uh, overnight in a car culture. This has become very popular because there's no COVID restriction on that. You know, you're going out there to be with nature by yourself. So, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Um, but you'll see uh, probably, I think it's around here. Yeah, I'm going to show you more of this water sports thing happening. Do, 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 do. We'll find you see the water sports. Oh, man, is that a G-Wagon? It is. Oh, dang. Yeah, lots, lots of, like... Koreans are becoming rich. Down, down, down there is BM, like a BMW. You see, it's like there'll be more foreign cars now. BMWs and Mercedes. They're, right. They used to be rare. Check this place out. Now, and right across everywhere. is an island called Nami Island. I want to fly my drone over it, even though this is yeah, not this uh, season. Because the best yeah, time to go I to Nami sort Island of is... Concerned. Spring or fall. This platform might <laughs> fall. But, uh, <laughs> Look, so a great way to so scout it out. Right? Yeah. With a hole that they spin around in that well, I think it's fine. It's concrete, right? I mean, this is just one of many but other places. Is that a hole right there too, right? Water sports are literally uh, all over the place. Is that a what? A hole? A hole? Yeah, like in the, on the floor. Or was that just... A hole. It was probably dirt. Like, because they didn't sweep the area. So Got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's that's there. Yeah. Yeah, so um a little sketchy, but all right, all right. It's the best vantage point. It's got good radio intercept like signal up there and I was going to fly it over that island uh, called Nami Island. It's a very popular tourist attraction in spring and fall. But I'm in the summer, so you'll see it's sort of empty now. But uh yeah, look at that. Have you ever seen one of those in America? What is that? A jet ski? It's like a it's it's like a tube thing and it's like a teacup ride in the middle of the ocean. You see it, they spin them around. Oh no, I didn't know it was connected. I was like, yeah. well, you know, jet ski, of course we have jet skis. Yeah, no, so Koreans are getting very creative with these water sports. So you know, it started out with jet ski Water. and wakeboarding, right? And um, I mean, if you go to Lake Havasu, that's that's what you'll see probably. Some people doing wakeboarding, but most people are just cruising around in yachts and uh, you know boats or whatever. I think Americans are quite boring, but Koreans got pretty creative and created some economy out of it. So not everybody can wakeboard. They just sort of want to enjoy it and they don't want to go through the trouble of learning it so then they have they have all these like floaty <laughs> contraptions that you can jump on and and it's like you probably have the same feeling as wakeboarding because you're you're going through the water and then that is like the latest invention i think it's like they spin you around in the water <laughs> it's like it's i think i'll get so seasick or car sick but um this by the way is nami island Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it might look cool <laughs> right now, but is this a golf course? No, it's a it's a tourist attraction. A lot of um, dramas and stuff are shot here. Oh, the reason okay. it's not as cool right now is this place looks best in spring and fall because particularly fall. Oh, the um, because yeah, the leaves right there. And then what they do is, I heard there's a lot of like leaves that fall in soul and stuff right like in the streets so the street cleaners have to clean that up because they don't want leaves falling all over the the ground and it'll get dirty so what do they do with all the leaves 
they actually bring them bring a lot of that over here and they cover the grounds with it because here it's not like for roads like people like to walk on it and take pictures so that's what i heard but um, i guess it was so i guess it's not bad even in the summer you see that that's lotus flowers but it's sort of past season lotus flowers bloom in july and now it's like towards the end of august so you just see the the leaves you know, this is the first time I'm sort of seeing it up close because I'm seeing it in a small iPhone screen when I'm flying it. But... Can you hook yeah. up on an iPhone instead of an iPhone? Huh? Can you hook up yeah. on an iPad instead of an uh, uh, iPad instead of an iPhone? No, I do iPhone instead of iPad. I Because iPad's really hard to balance and all that on there, and I don't want to bring it. Oh, okay. Um, although that would be ideal if... Yeah, wow, this looks pretty nice actually. Oh, there's still some lotus flowers there. I guess this I guess Nami Island you can go in the summer too. It's not too bad. There's like it no sort of one does... there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's sort of like it looks so creepy. Hmm? It's like it looks so creepy. It's like you know yeah. like, Oh now you see some people which is refreshing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. like this picture I shot, there's no one there. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah, but you see, you see that? Like, they have a little tube. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, one's the cool. one that spins. This other one in the back, you see? Uh, that pink looks really and fun. Blue, whatever, and then the green thing is, uh, or the thing that. Oh, yeah, oh that see, one like... doesn't spin. Oh, maybe you gotta activate something to make it spin. And then they got that yellow one that just goes straight, and then they're just laying on it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they, they, they have all sorts of versions of this. And then, you know, you saw that, that that was a water slide, but you see, they create like a water play area right there. And there's so many of these just littered along um, the riverbanks now in Korea, like near Seoul, because people want to go and enjoy it. So I was looking at the prices for these and you can like enjoy this water area. Um, it's like unlimited. It's like about 20 bucks. You could do one of these rides. And it's uh, per person. It's ten to twenty bucks. Um, uh, I guess you go out there for like, like twenty thirty minutes. I'm not sure. I didn't ask that, um, but you sort of assume they they go out there and do that quite. It's not. It's. I think it's at least twenty thirty minutes. I'll double check. Oh, that looks cool. There. See that? They're just sitting on there. They're so close to the water. Yeah, this looks amazing. Yeah, and you don't have to go through the trouble of wakeboarding. But I, I sort of want to learn wakeboarding, and I looked at the prices for it. And like a three-hour like course plus you get to try for like an hour, that was only like 50 to 60 bucks. It's quite affordable. And maybe if I shopped around, I could probably find it for even cheaper. So I think that is a benefit like one benefit of coronavirus is you know we can't travel but at least in korea uh, koreans love to travel and because they have all that money they need to spend somewhere um you know they sort of started developing tourism inside korea so um, even without coronavirus i think like these water parks and stuff like this this water activity areas they would have grown but I think they've seen a bigger boost. Like everyone I know now in Seoul sort of goes to Kapyong, this area for water sports uh, in the summer. It's just like a thing you do. And because there's such an economy of scale on it, I think that's why they're able to make it a little bit more affordable, you know? So that's something I, like, I don't see at all in Thailand, you know? So that's enjoyable. <laughs> you don't see anyone traveling internally in thailand no like these these water sports it's, oh, water it's, sports. it's yeah, yeah even though everything is sort of cheaper there this is reserved for like the wealthy you know and the thing that i saw that that was the most affordable was like uh like sea dew you know you can go on a sea dew in pattaya but you got to be careful Hi guys, with that because fantastic. there's so many scams around on. Um, but they still cost like 50 to 70 bucks uh, when I checked. Um, and you definitely don't have... I'm sure you could find somewhere to wakeboard, but it's, it's not as common. 
<laughs> I guess this is a positive about um, driving in the countryside, though. There's not that many cars, so <laughs> I could sort of ignore the traffic <laughs> laws and <laughs> nobody really. <laughs> just pull anything nice to and just have like your camera, drone. <laughs> uh -huh. Try one handed. I don't know what else you're doing on this bike right now, but it looks intense. I've I've done that and like it's sort of dangerous but honestly I wouldn't do it around here there's actually a lot of cars but most of the other areas I go to like I'll be driving for 30 minutes to an hour and there's maybe I come across one car you know so then I like use my GoPro and get the shots and such um, I go back and forth on the road and get a drone shot uh, yeah, if, if if I get to my like uh, Cholado uh, uh, videos, if I start editing those, you'll see like I'm literally one handing the drone and having it chase me while I drive on the road because I could literally it's like very flat over there. I can see for miles ahead of me, and I know there is absolutely no car coming at me. You know, so um, yeah. And and nobody like thinks it's very irresponsible or there to report you per se. Um, I think that's one positive aspect of driving in Korea right now. I think it's at this perfect equilibrium of you have relative freedom, you know, but it's relatively safe. Oh, that's a that's a nice car, but nice car. yeah, it's two dudes sitting in there. I'm like, I was expecting him to have a hot girl. It was like two dudes, and I'm like, oh, what a shame. <laughs> This is crazy. It just turned like super industrial, like nature, nature, nature. Super industrial now. All these shops. I see a Seven Eleven. Yeah. I mean, definitely not nature anymore. <laughs> You'll see this in Korea. Yeah. That's crazy too. Just having a, like a parking lot in the middle of a street, in the middle of an intersection. Can you so... imagine? That? Yeah, the the thing is, this area um, is Nami Island. I think I'm still talking. Yeah, so usually you would see a lot more people there, especially like in the spring and fall, because that Nami Island is one of the major tourist attractions in Korea. Like I think when I talk to like Thai people and they're like, oh, you know, I'm, where, where have you been to Korea? It's like I traveled in Seoul and I went to Nami Island, you know? So it's really popular, but there aren't as many people there right now. But that's basically how the entrance to Nami Island, where you pay the entrance and you take a boat. So that's why whenever there's like a place like a huge tourist attraction, then, um, you know, all these businesses will start opening up over there. Like you'll see, and all those restaurants are serving the same thing, by the way. <laughs> Did you notice that? It's, it's uh, spicy marinated chicken because Chuncheon, which is like right next to here, is known for their spicy marinated chicken ribs. So it's like the same region. You know, it's pro it probably tastes the same. They source everything in the same place. But that is like the, you know, flagship food of this area. So a lot of people need something to eat after they go to Nami Island. So you have a bunch of restaurants and yeah, like all of a sudden you have this huge tourist area. So that's, that's why it was like that. Um, but like you'll see this a lot even I'll be in the most remote places But I'm driving through and it's like a lake and there's like a nice view You'll see cafes like tons of cafes just all over so um, 
yeah, you're even though it's sort of that's the thing I think is different than Thailand. Like in Thailand, if you're in nature, one good thing is you're like really in nature, you know. And it's like maybe you'll see some like local street foods here and there, but you don't have like these modern amenities. In Korea, you're never too far away from modern amenities, like really nice public bathrooms, you know. Uh, like even in Thailand, you'll find Seven Elevens, but if you go to like the very wild areas, you won't find it. But in Korea, it'll be everywhere. So, I think it, it's like a perfect balance right now. Like at least that's how it feels like to me. It's like in between America and um, Thailand. In some ways, there's things that just exceed America, like um, the rest areas and such like that. It's really clean. Um, they're more frequent than America. Uh, but at the same time, you, you still have a lot of natural areas, you know, and you know what you said about Napa Valley, like I'm in Orange County, but I travel all the way to San Francisco and above to see Napa Valley because uh, maybe I'm biased because around my area, it's, it's mostly desert, right? It's like you go a little bit north, there's Bakersfield, like what's, what's there to see in Bakersfield? <laughs> <laughs> we have to travel like five hours to get to Vegas and that's still in the middle of a desert but that's something to see everything is so like stretched out you know but in Korea like every region there is something unique and like it's very like there's there's something you know that's what I like about traveling in Korea it's like it might be a small area but there's just as much if not more to see in this small area because Korea has like developed all of it you know and I think one of the advantages is it, this isn't possible in America because uh, you're gonna have less tourists because everything is so s far out so even though you're in San Francisco or I was in LA I'm less likely to travel out on a weekend like because it's such a big investment I have to like travel five hours to get to San Francisco or you know three hours you know just to just go to mountain high just to snowboard whereas here you could even just take the subway and you could be out here in like an hour you know what I'm saying so um, they're able to like really develop these countryside areas I think that's sort of illegal but <laughs> yeah uh, I wanted to show you guys this bridge. I have a thing for bridges. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that every area, um, yeah, the, the states has that, you know, where everything is more spread out. It's hard to kind of, you know, do things, especially in California compared to the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything is super, you know, modern and industrialized and then Korea is, is getting there, right? Uh, and Thailand's kind of falling behind, but I think there's a beauty in each one, right? The simplicity of Thailand, I think that's yep. what attracts a lot of people to it. And, and yep. Korea is like developing, it's getting there, and it's getting to, you know, some could argue that surpass US, US levels. And in the US, I think that the thing that really uh, kind of helped with this pandemic, the, the brighter side is that hmm. you got to, discover your own local area more you know like oh, yeah, yeah. you know i'm in san francisco but you know i never want to go to the sites i never want to go to golden gate park or see <laughs> whatever but all my friends that are not from here they definitely uh, want to go there right so yeah yeah you, know, you take your area for granted you don't you really go out and explore but i think now more than ever people you know are discovering all these places around them that has a little bit of country that has oh, a little yeah. bit of country or whatever else but you know really discovering the area more so than than any other time in history because yeah. right now that's the only thing you could do <laughs> yeah I, I mean i think that is a positive now that you mentioned i think it's happening in every every country you know like americans I, I i don't know i can't relate to america but you just confirm that you know americans are discovering all this stuff near there so it supports the local tourism that should be supported um korea same way like i mentioned they're developing like these water sports and they're developing like uh like a camping culture and such like that that didn't exist so there's more infrastructure about it and it's only it's only going to be better after the pandemic's over because you know koreans will then uh, venture out and start traveling elsewhere, which leaves, you know, 
more supply available to all the tourists that will come in. And even Thailand, I heard, uh, like I saw a lot of my Thai friends go to Phuket before the Phuket sandbox because it was really hurting and they were offering all these deals. And, you know, I'm sure they enjoyed it. And another thing they, they did, I heard, was um, they started complaining about the local Tuk Tuk Mafia. Have you been to Phuket, by the way? Yes, one time. Like, yeah, you, you experienced the local Tuk Tuk Mafia where, like, for some reason, the taxi and the Tuk Tuk prices there are, like, 10 times worse than everywhere else in, in Thailand, you yep. know? So I guess these guys were struggling because there's no tourists, right? So usually on a normal day, I've heard they only double charge the foreigners, but the locals, they get a lower price. But apparently they were charging foreigner pricing to the locals and that really angered like the local Thai people so then they started complaining about it and apparently it's gotten recognition where the the governor of Phuket I don't know if he did something about it but he said he was gonna do something about it and to me that's at least a step in the right direction you know so uh, like I guess that's just one example I'm sure there's other areas that they they may have developed and made better you know like that's that's my positive thinking uh, so when it does open up, I think there's there's definitely some positives to that, you know. Uh, but what I wanted to ask you is, now that you've sort of seen the roads and such here, like how safe do you think it is driving in Korea? You know, because you'll you always hear people say, oh, you know, Korean drivers are crazy, you know, Thai drivers are crazy. But if you're in California, we also, you know, we know that California drivers are crazy or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And you can, it's like, it's really hard to make a decision if it is crazy or not based on what other people say, because everybody thinks everybody else is a horrible driver, you know. Um, but now that you've driven in Thailand and, you know, you definitely know America, I mean, does does it seem like really bad the roads? Does it seem like I'm risking my life here? <laughs> what, what, what's, what's your opinion on this? I mean, I feel like you know, if, if I could, I put it this way: if I could drive a motorbike in Thailand, I could drive anywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about it, and uh, yeah. you know, just because when I when I first went to Thailand. Uh. I would say about eight years ago, um, like things were a lot different, you know, back then. Well, uh -huh. not hugely, but still like significant amounts, you know? Yeah. And yeah. the first time I got a motorbike, I never drove a motorbike before. I'm like, all right, how hard could it be? It's like a bike, you know, it's like a motorcycle. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they don't tell you is like, you know how to drive you know alongside with the ties and like what you should do in some of the scenarios like in between different places to be more safe and all this other after. stuff right i'll be headed yeah, over yeah. to but, you know, riverway yeah, of I mean, uh, like, Papyong. You know, that's gonna like, be fantastic think, you know there's definitely sure concrete here that. there's white lines there's you know, <laughs> barb railings you know like i feel uh -huh. it's definitely safe you know um I just feel that when people say, oh, like it's crazy here and the driver's crazy there, uh, I think I think it's inevitable with as the city grows, it's going to be crazier because there's going to be more cars on the road, right? And more cars on yeah, the road yeah. equals more craziness for everybody. But um, mm. like, I think that could be solved. And this is a whole different discussion, but um, if there's like a future where cars are all automated, like, there'll, there'll oh. be no like everything would be oh like, you're you're part of the part of that crew wow but i i i expect you to be you're you're quite the optimist i noticed you know so okay yeah that's true that could definitely solve it um if we can advance tech oh that's interesting but um, yeah i think it is super safe it looks you know like a few cracks here and there but that's not the same with the us you know like yeah, yeah. Potholes, potholes exist, and you should know driving an S two thousand, a lot of potholes in LA, probably. 
I don't even drive in LA with my S2000. So, like, because <laughs> it was lowered. <laughs> um, so you did a lot of potholes. And, and the potholes, yeah. But that's. And the parking lot, you know, to, like, yeah, to, to yeah. your bobo places to go hang out with your buds. <laughs> like, you're yeah, like, all right. Sure. <laughs> I have to put this at a hard here. <laughs> S2000 was perfect for Orange County and, like, you know, the road condition, actually this right here, this is the worst I've seen it, like with like the cracks in the roads and such. Most other places, actually more so in the countryside, like in the Chalado area, because they didn't really develop that area. And before, like for political reasons, there was like a lot of funding that was withheld. But now there's all this new funding. So all the new roads, are, like I noticed, are like in the Cholado, like the southwest, like very countryside area. So it's like the most remote place, but it has really great roads. It, it's actually, it was the same when I went to Chiang Mai and I was going to Pai. They just repaved that road and it's so nice. Um, but this I, this area, I think, is, is sort of a little bit more established. That's why the, the roads aren't good. But it's not like Seoul where there's a lot of people. So they've redid the roads, etc. But yeah, overall, um, I, think, I think it's pretty good. It, it's really hard to compare and contrast. But if I had to sort of say there isn't like any one place that's completely safe to drive a motorcycle or drive a car. You, you always have a possibility for accidents. But um, I would say the negatives for Thailand, I'm not, I, I actually thought the roads were okay, you know? They're not too bad. Um, uh, it is very confusing though in the city, especially if you're American and you're having to drive on the left-hand side, there's possibility of mess-ups if you're not used to that. But after you get used to it, it's all right. Um, but and in the city, it's probably better because they're always stuck in traffic. So you just you can't really get into a high speed accident. Right. But as you can see here in, in, in Korea, it's somewhat similar to California, whereas if you get to the urban centers, like I was not feeling comfortable driving around here. This is at relatively high speeds and you have cars merging left and right, you know? So I had to be really careful about making my presence known and, you know, me not being in a blind spot and somebody just like side swapping me or whatnot. Like up there, you'll see like almost like I had an incident too, like way up there. But in that sense, I sort of feel like Bangkok is little safer because you're just driving through parked cars but when you go out into the countryside of thailand it feels really dangerous because there is absolutely no enforcement of like traffic laws there i think there there aren't that many cops there aren't that many cctvs like here there are cctvs everywhere like every five kilometers there's cctv so even if like people speed it'll be like bursts of speeds and they will like slow down eventually you know because there's going to be a cctv um so but in thailand there there is none of that um so i actually feel very in danger driving around in, in the in the countryside especially in the northeast um strangely i didn't really drive around in pattaya though um but one place i did drive around was like uh Kochang, which is an island and that place although it's sort of a countryside area like the islands were okay because there's not that many cars like it's sort of like korean countryside like you don't really run into too many cars anyways so i felt okay with it but i mean what what do you think about those points would you agree like in your well, experience I mean, in, in like which way though? Like, would you agree? Like Thailand, like have you driven through the countryside, like the real countryside areas? How did you feel about that? I didn't or drive. you just mainly drove around like Pattaya maybe or? Yeah, I just mainly drove around there. Um, I didn't drive too much into the countryside or anything like that. Um, but for me, like, what I what I do what you're doing right now, 
Probably not. I'll probably drive a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just we we had then, that discussion. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like I, I, would, I would I'd rather be in a car. Um, but if I once I kind of like figure out the area, uh -huh. then I'll get a motorbike and you know try to you know do other things. But I feel that um, a motorbike is there for. It's convenience factor, you know, it's just so convenient, so nimble. It could get through these tight spaces as you can see right now. Uh, you, you're, you're so just agile with it, right? But yeah. the drawback is that if, you, if you're if you riding with more more than two people, you know, you can't ride three people on a, on yeah, a motorbike. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Unless, like, you're in Thailand. I've seen that happen before. But still, that's kind of <laughs> insane, you know? Like, I mean, yeah, it is, two, it is. And then that, like, you know, if you want to go somewhere and do something, like, where does auto luggage go? I don't know. Like, do you just wear everything? Yeah. Like, I have yeah. no clue, right? So, uh, like, like in, in that sense, yeah. But there's there's pros and cons for both. I think that once you, um, if, if you're going on a trip like this alone, then yeah, like, just weaving through in, in and out of cars and getting out of these tight spaces, I think it's pretty exhilarating, pretty cool. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't know if I would do it, man. Like, you know, you're a braver man than I. Like, I, I would be like, uh, I don't know. I, like, I don't blame you because I think around the if I had about the same amount of experience driving a motorcycle as you did, I, I felt about the same way because, you know, in the beginning I went to like Kochang and that's when I first drove uh, a motorcycle and uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it because it was like around like paradise a tropical paradise you can smell the the waters and such you you see the, you feel the breeze so that's an exhilarating feeling but when i'm in bangkok i'm just thinking convenience like i'm not really driving because you know i want to smell the fresh smog out there <laughs> you know what i'm saying so oh. there was no incentive for me uh until i realized just how convenient it is because it's really fast it's hard to find parking or whatever. I don't have to deal with haggling with taxis. And then I sort of justified it a little bit more because like eventually taxis, your life is out of your hands in, in Thailand. And I feel like sometimes I'm in more, like it's very dangerous. Like, especially when I'm going to the airport, I'm hanging on to dear life. And I'm like, this guy is making some maneuvers that I'm not comfortable <laughs> with. Um, and it's not, you know, I've, I've been young and wild like that before. There was a time, you know, I drove S2000s, JDM, you know, all that, Rice Rocket, the spoiler <laughs> on my car. So I, I know, like, I can relate. I can relate to what this guy is doing. And I'm like, I've been in accidents doing stuff, you know, far less crazy than he does. So I might as well just put my life in my own hands. So, you know, if I'm going to die, it's going to be because of my mistake right um but aside from that i think uh it's a good measure like i i don't think i am like really uh I, what my opinion that I, what i want like to know from you is not necessarily would you drive a motorcycle but how do you feel about like the road like how safe it is to drive on on the roads here in korea based on what you see you know like is it it doesn't surprise you at all like because i get a lot of comments like koreans drive like crazy they're like maniacs they never drive on korean roads like not even in a car you know like that kind of thing i mean like i said before you know like if i if i could drive in thailand i could drive anywhere in the world right like this type of driving aggressive driving like yeah, yeah you know yeah. i'm from california i've been to new york i've been to la i've been to uh, Houston area. I've been to Austin, you know, yeah. uh, Seattle, where all these, you know, really bad traffic areas are. And like I said, you know, like the more cars you have, I feel like the more aggressive you have to be, you know. Yeah, like, you have you know, to be. Otherwise, you'll just be stuck. Yeah, for you're sure. stuck, right? Like in LA, if you're not aggressive and you get into that lane you want to get into, like you're yeah, yeah, sure. there for another twenty minutes, right? So, yeah, yeah, as yeah. like any city goes, the more cars it gets, yeah, like oh, yeah. it becomes, but. Uh, yeah. That's when that's when you send like uh, the saying goes that the best defense is the best offense, right? So you have to be like a very, uh, you know, very you know uh, alert and making sure everything is good and and really have purpose in your actions and you know that's that's that, this is how I feel in terms of here. But even still, this is not like 
New York, like New York Times Square, New York, like tax. That's that's aggressive, you know. Like I've been in those type of cabs where I'm in fucking Times Square, New York, yeah. trying to get somewhere. You know, they're yeah. making these crazy maneuvers that I, I haven't even seen in Thailand before. You know, but they yeah. have to do it like it's it's insane. It's I've like, never I never experienced that. <laughs> like, it, it was absolutely insane. Like what they were doing. I'm like, dude, like yeah. This is like to put in perspective. Like this taxi driver went over, like this huh. traffic uh, or the sidewalk to get like one one like inch closer to this uh, like turn for this other car. I'm like, dude, what 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 is going on what? right now? It's, it was crazy, yeah, to get into those spots. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, it's it's the time of day as well. You know, like I was there for New yeah, Year's. Yeah, yeah. It was like some big celebration um but like this is pretty tame you know like right here in the countryside i've yeah, been yeah. in the toll before and I, I could tell the traffic gets bad but i feel like that's like anywhere you know oh where... this is this is where i almost well i didn't get an accident because i checked my blind spots and shit but this was where i sort of had a see i'm trying to make a left turn because it's there and this guy i i was signaling for a long time but the guy wouldn't slow down you know like you notice i was like i i checked like I was signaled way before and I'm like checking and he wasn't there and he just kept speeding up and I'm like fine it's okay you can you can go past me but then he's like honking at me like he owns the road when you know honestly I was like way ahead of him so like these are the kinds of stuff like I sort of watch out for you know like I always check my blind spot if so like I always I'm aware that Koreans are relatively aggressive drivers so if you signal they're not gonna most likely let you in you know so that's like i think this is but you know like i don't think this is necessarily crazy driving because i have experienced just as aggressive or even more aggressive in thailand and um like la like i i i, I like i guess i don't really understand some of these people that say you know it's like yeah korean drivers are maniacs or like thai drivers are maniacs because to me like what you said it's very hard to generalize a country and say you know everybody in that country are maniac drivers because depending on where you are in that country like a city center or whatever i think um you have to be aggressive to actually be able to get around in very like condensed city centers and stuff like this you know but the more you go into the countryside and people are just relaxed, like them cutting somebody off is maybe going to get them somewhere five seconds faster, it, which really doesn't matter. Then it's going to be, it, it's not as crazy. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I, I think that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely a, a point that you made that I would agree with. It's, uh, it's less to do with the country per se. Um, but like the area of the country whether it's like very urban or something like that you know totally <clears throat> totally um but it's been like an hour and i have to go grab some lunch so i'm gonna take off but uh right. thanks for being on i really like this uh talk here it's really cool in terms of um it's awesome countryside it's just amazing uh, yeah yeah Definitely Actually, like. this is this is perfect because there's only 17 minutes left of this anyway. So <laughs> I'll just I'll just wrap it up, man. But thanks for hopping on, and appreciate yeah. you, you know, giving me your insight because yeah, I'll, like I haven't been driving in the states for long, and I, I, I've driven in many places, so I know I could relate to why some people might think it's crazy because when I drove through areas like you know, North Carolina and your Fort Blagg or something, people don't drive all crazy because they have huge roads. There's almost nobody around. So everybody just, you know, goes according to the laws or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, it's also interesting to hear your perspectives on like New York and what's recently happened to the, the streets with the homeless and such. That's, that's new to me, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know um, things are 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 definitely different now. Um, but you know, like 
that's how it's always gonna be. Things are always gonna be different. Things are things are always gonna be changing. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, be like certain things, like you said, like this tight ass road right here, right here. You know, like you may not be able to add another lane there because there's like I don't know on the other side of it. I don't even know what's on the other side of it, but. Yeah, there's a mountain on the left and the red like I, it would be hard to like they could carve the mountain i guess but it wouldn't be I worth it so. yeah yeah but uh yeah um yeah man like this is awesome like hopefully you do more videos like this this is really really cool and you know, it just shows a different um perspective of, of what people are doing during this pandemic because i think that's what um you know a lot of people want to know when they watch youtube is like oh i wonder what people are Doing over here or doing over there, right? And uh, yep, I think just seeing all this is is always a good sign to return back to normalcy uh, uh, sooner sooner than later. I don't know when that's going to be, but um, yeah, yeah, you know, people just going outside and doing things more outside, doing stuff like this is is super helpful. So uh, yeah, thank you for all that you do. Oh, wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. And yeah, that, that would be like a great way to end this on that note, because um, that, I think that's that's one of the reasons I had tears in my eyes when I was driving out here, because for like the last two weeks, I've, you know, you know, I was like in my discord and just doing discord and such because I had to edit. So I'm, I'm home. I had to be home all the time, even though the weather is all great and such. Um, but uh, on my Discord, we're generally talking about, you know, when are we going to go back to Thailand and stuff like this. And when, when I start having to talk about that, it becomes really depressing because it's a, it's a glass half empty story, you know, uh, whichever way you want to cut it. We can't go to Thailand. Thailand, you know, whether it be because it's, it's not in a good situation right now, because of travel restrictions or whatever. Um, and it's really hard to see it glass half full. And I, I just remembered, you know, the reason why I was out here in Korea and I'm appreciating it is like last year I was driving all around, um, enjoying the countryside and such. And I, I, I realized I didn't do as much, you know, and when, when you're just stuck home and you're just thinking about the glass half empty, you know, like I can't go to Thailand or I can't do this. And it becomes depressing. And, and when I went outside, I, I realized, wow, you know what? Look at all these people. They're enjoying themselves. They're going on these crazy water water rides and such. Um, you know, they're driving their motorcycle or saving, saying hi. So I, I think that's that's what I would like people to take back from this. It's not that, you know, one road is worse than another, but that, um, you know, just go out there and uh, enjoy yourself because uh, if you actually get yourself out there and you do something, I, I promise you it, it's, it's not that bad, you know, just like the people's champ said, um, you know, people in America are also discovering all the, the cool local things they can do around, uh, where they are. And the only thing you can control is what you can do right now. So. You know, I, I know you guys want to come out here to Korea. You want to come out here to Thailand. Um, but wherever you are, whether it be America or my, you know, I have a lot of viewers from India or uh, Europe, wherever, uh, just get out there and enjoy what's around your area. You know, I, it's like no matter how many times I've driven around these roads, this is, this is a road that I've never been on and it's only 20 minutes away from my place it's like i i was driving like almost every day and uh last year and i still haven't found this place and as you can see it's there's a lot of things to do around here and and i could probably go around here again and go into all the little crevices and find even more interesting stuff and i feel like that's how it's probably going to be in your area and your neck of the woods and uh, the way i see it um if because we are gonna have this pandemic probably at least you know a couple more months things aren't gonna change as far as the glass half empty but um you know when it does go back to the normal and we can start traveling uh 
we probably wouldn't want to, you know, discover these local areas because we're thinking, hey, you know, we could travel. Why, why, why stay, you know, in our neighborhood? Um, so this is a great opportunity to do that. I think, um, you know, I have this philosophy of trying to experience the most out of my life. And, you know, as, as amazing as Thailand may be or some of these other places, I, I don't see the point of just, you know, just doing the same thing over and over again there uh, when, you know, there's new experiences to be had in your local neighborhood. And uh, you could just think of it as an opportunity to do it now. And uh, it probably right now is the best time to do it because you don't have the tourists. Otherwise, uh, if I went to Nami Island today, for example, it would be full of foreign tourists, you know, and they probably, everything would probably cost more. Uh, the roads would probably be even, you know, more unsafe. But, um, you know, right now, because of the pandemic, your local area is probably the best place to explore and it will never be like this. So take advantage of that, see it as half full, and uh, I hope you really, really enjoy, um, you know, your life until all this is over. Um, I have to really, really appreciate the People's Champ for hopping on. Um, he had to, you know, take off a little earlier, but uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy that uh, he enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think uh, if you enjoy these motorcycle videos. Uh, I've been posting them on my other Traveling Asia channel um, but you know I might do this more regularly on this main channel if you like it uh, these long form videos because I've you know been ex people have expressed to me that they like my neighborhood walks so maybe you guys will like my motorcycle videos and let me also know what you think about me having guests on and uh, commenting or if you just like me rambling about like a, a specific uh, topic as I usually do, um, but I personally, you know, prefer to have people on because it, it definitely provides a fresh perspective. And um, even if I want to talk about a specific topic and I want to ramble, it would be um, good to have someone like cut me off and uh, you know input their perspective as well. So um, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you want to check out my previous ones, make sure you check out my other channel traveling asia just youtube.com slash traveling asia uh, and you'll also notice that lately on there i have been putting all of my drone footage that i take whenever i travel uh, some people have expressed that they really like the drone footage they don't like it when i speed it up and speed ramp it in my regular vlogs but unfortunately i have to do that because you know, I'm trying to have a certain time frame and I have hours and hours of drone footage. So to uh, resolve for that, I've just created drone montages. Uh, I, I don't think I've properly advertised that to my regular viewers here. But um, just go ahead and give me some likes and some love over there. And that way, you know, maybe I'll be motivated to finally get some of the other drone footage from Jeju Island and, and some of the more scenic areas around here. Um, whatever the case, uh, I think I only have about 10 more minutes. Um, I also want, and, and by the way, if you've listened to me talk and you're interested in this kind of long uh, discussions, uh, please, please uh, hop on to the Discord channel, it's been fantastic. I really, really like interacting with my viewers there. And uh, unlike Facebook or anything else, it's it's a bit more raw, obviously. So I, I, I will warn you that uh, there's people with many different opinions. Uh, you are most likely going to be offended by something. But if you are open to like new opinions and you're not you know just trying to change the world so it's just exactly like what you think but you're like me where you're always interested in you know listening to other opinions and possibly seeing if you know there's some golden nuggets in there that could maybe help change your opinion about something and uh, you're like an open book 
you know, hop onto that Discord because we have lots of these discussions, and I hope to use that as an avenue to um, have more topics, uh, interesting topics that you guys want uh, covered, as well as to use that to also, um, you know, uh, discuss and uh, make these videos because what I'm doing right now is I'm streaming this video on Discord live to everybody on there and I was able to have somebody that um, you know happens to be online uh, decide to comment on it and make this video together so this will be great if I could have you know more people come on there and uh, I hope to see more of you guys on Discord. I'll put the description on the uh, uh, like the com like uh, the link to Discord on the description and the comments below. So scroll down there and uh, hop on it. If you don't see it or it doesn't work because Discord, there's like the links are only active for a certain amount of time, and you're seeing this video maybe released, you know, a year or so after. You can always um, message me on Instagram or Facebook. Facebook is um, facebook.com slash Ethan LTA Live Travel Asia or Instagram is just simply Instagram slash Live Travel Asia. I'm on there more often now. You could go ahead and message me and I'll send you the link. So you're always free to hop on um, and I, I hope we could create like a nice little community where people can help each other and provide insights about living and traveling in different uh, countries in the world now. It was originally going to be Asia, but I have people posting about, you know, how it is in New York right now. Some of my viewers posting and, and now I think that's what I would do. Just we have a lot of people who have a lot of knowledge to share in their own walks of life. You know, maybe you, you haven't been able to travel out to Asia as often as me. Uh, but you could definitely, you know, share with other people out here um, how it is, like in your neck of the woods, because uh, I personally wouldn't mind traveling to really anywhere in the world. It doesn't, it's just because I'm Live Travel Asia doesn't mean I'm only going to limit myself to Asia. If I had the opportunity, I'll go to Europe, I'll, you know, I'll travel to other states, I'll travel to other states in America that I haven't been to, and, uh, you know, South America or wherever. So. Uh, definitely add some insight onto that. I would love it. But, uh, yep, by the way, this right here is where I started. I just circled around and I'm back to where I am. <laughs> so it's, it's about to end. And uh, they're slowing down because, what do you call that? The rubber chicken next? There is absolutely no reason why there should be traffic here and it to be slow, but I'm enjoying this because I can take my time looking at this amazing site, beautiful Korea, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what everybody else is doing. <laughs> because as I go forward, I realize there's, there's no other reason there should be traffic up here. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys can hop onto Discord. Um, by the way, what Discord is, for those of you guys who don't know, because it's relatively a new thing, um, although if you don't know now, you'll probably know about it. It's like the next greatest and best social thing because uh, it's not like Instagram where it's just a bunch of pictures. It's not like Facebook where it's a bunch of ads and, you know, um, you know, self-promoting. It's it's an area where it's almost like a messaging app, but you have different topics. So in my Live Travel Asia channel, I have a section for you know talking about traveling in so and so countries and travel uh, living in so and so countries. And I also have little you know subsections, and I can create additional subsections, but subsections for hobbies such as you know what movies are you watching and such. So. Um, it's just started, so hop on there and uh, definitely provide some feedback. And uh, as a reminder, if you are a Patreon, um, please uh, give me a DM because I, I have like a special uh, like role I assign to you. And uh, yeah, I've gotten some feedback that it would be great if I have like a private channel there 
and some additional benefits such as archived audios from chats that I, I don't make public on Discord and such, uh, only available to my Patreon. So uh, if I get more people on there and I see that they find that valuable, I'll go ahead and do that. By the way, this right here is um, it's about five, 10 minutes from where I ended the video. But I just noticed this really cool cafe and uh, it's like on top of this hill and it's, it's really nice. I think so. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. But they have like indoor seating, outdoor seating, overlooking this little ranch here with sheep and horses. Uh, yeah. I probably don't do like cafes enough because I don't drink coffee, but <laughs> this is like a little bonus footage I'm going to throw in there because I, I just thought it was too cool to not shoot. Um, but yeah, there was like a bunch of sheep actually when I was driving by it in the morning onto the left hand side, but they're all in the little pen area. And uh, you see those horses on to the right. That's pretty cool. Very popular with couples. And, uh, you know, there's a good chance if you're out here in Asia, you might meet a nice Korean lady. And although it's sort of cool to drive around in a motorcycle and have some outdoor adventures, Ladies like these cafes, so here's a bit of that. Oh, there's like a lot of sheep. I didn't realize how much sheep there were when I was uh, seeing it on my phone. Yeah, here's a here's a little FPV action from Ethan. <laughs> I did the best I could winding through here in a very smooth manner. But look at all those empty seats. I, I just feel like this place is maybe too good to just keep to myself. Um, it'd be nice to have more people come and support these kinds of cafes. That way they build cooler stuff. And uh, I have cooler stuff to show you. <laughs> Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize I was going too fast. The image seems a bit blurry. I will take care of that in the future. But thanks again, guys, for watching. And uh, I really, really appreciate it if you've watched this video to this end. And uh, I hope to see you guys again next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. <laughs>